Yeah, what's up guys, Beals here, and I'm back with a very quick tutorial today because uh, <laughs> I kinda kinda didn't realize that it was Tuesday and um, so yeah, I'm doing a quick tutorial now but nonetheless it's gonna be a very important tutorial um, I'm gonna be talking about how to make your cinematics look better just some quick tips and it'll make uh, your whole montage or whatever whatever you're editing um look a lot more uh professional or just look better all right so um first of all we have a basic cinematic here it's just something i i shot for um Mises introduction to 6s and i thought it was a really cool cinematic somehow I had some pretty text back there, and yeah. Alright, so, um, first thing what I do, when I have the cinematic, I drag it into my main comp. Uh, let's say this is my main comp right here, uh, and I wanna... First thing you wanna do is put this thing into a, a, a pre-comp, and you do this by going to Layer, Pre-Compose, or, um, it's good to know shortcuts, it's Control, Shift, and C. And I guess you want to put it to leave all attributes and there you go now double click and you go into your into that pre-comp and you want to find the start of that clip let me just cl uh, trim the clip down inside the pre-comp as well you normally trim it down at the end as well but since my pre-comp is going to the end of the clip I don't have to do that alright so um, first of all, if you want to track it, um, you can do that by here, go to Tracker, Track Camera, and um, I'll do some tutorials on that as well, but for now I'm just going to um, worry about some other things. Um, what normally looks really good is having some kind of depth of field. If you don't know what it is, um, depth of field is basically having things in focus and having things out of focus. Um, so things out of focus will look blurry and you can fake that if you don't have a PC version where they have some kind of magic tool that can make that wide recording you can fake that by making an adjustment layer first of all uh, and then put some I normally use box blur put the, the iterations to 2 repeat at edge pixels and then set it to um, I always mix it up set that to 3 for the parts that are going to be out of focus in front of the focus and then we're going to copy that or uh, afterwards we're going to copy that and um, for things out of focus behind the focus uh, distance we're going to set that to 2 just because things further in the distance don't are normally not that out of focus like dot that blurry when you look, in, look at them through a camera at least that's what I feel like would be re most, most realistic. Um, and now you have that adjustment layer. And you want to basically just, just mask uh, uh, where your focus is going to be. Uh, mine's going to be on the basketball, obviously, because that's, that makes sense, I suppose. And it, it doesn't have to be good. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can just make, like, a really simple mask like that and then you want to press M keyframe the mask path move first of all to the end um, and just kind of move everything where, it's, where it will be uh, so you want to get your starting point and your end point right at first and then you can worry about the things in the middle part. Um, so we have a far first point, the starting point right, we got our end point right, and now the p uh, mask is kind of falling along but not too well, so we actually have to adjust something. So here looks kind of okay actually, for some reason. But then we want to go between two keyframes, just in the middle part, like right in the middle of two keyframes, we're going to select those because those are the only ones really moving. Um, okay, 
Let's see how that looks. They're moving a little bit too slow, so let's adjust that, you know, halfway between those keyframes. Let's look here, okay. And by always going like halfway between two keyframes, you can save yourself a lot of time. Instead of going like keyframe per keyframe per keyframe, you just go halfway. And like between this keyframe and this keyframe, it will be adjusting kind of. But if it isn't adjusting too well, you can always add another keyframe in between them and just make it look better. And like I said, you don't you don't have to make it perfect and um that certainly is uh w won't even matter if you're not having the cinematic like really long there or if you just have it as a little tracking cinematic or something like that. And okay, I think we're good. Um so like you said, see th that was really easy. But be sure to make your mask uh to think of your mask layout before you actually mask that shape. Because changing it now would be a pain in the ass because you have to adjust every keyframe here. Alright, so let's put that back on. Let's see our basketball's out of focus. So this is gonna be our um out of focus for the background. We just have to put it to subtract. So go to mask and put um put that to subtract or click invert it and that'll do the same. But now you see we have some really sharp edges here, which doesn't even like it's not even that noticeable if you look from it far away, but uh, you still wanna go to your adjustment layer, press F and then feather the mask edge for like normally go up to seventy five or something like that and it'll just you really don't see the, the soft edge anymore. And if some if if it's a little blurry on the edge of the basketball, that's that doesn't matter either, because it's uh, nothing's perfect when you're filming. All right, so and like I said before, now that we have all this keyframing done, we can just um, uh, duplicate this one and set that mask to add, and then set the box blur to free. And now we have um, a setup for the background being out of focus, and we have a setup for the basketball being out of focus, so the foreground is out of focus. We could really go into detail and max the palms out so that this uh, back here, those, those rocks and mountains, will be really out of focus, but th you won't even notice it. So let's not worry about that. And there you go. And now we could drag a text back here and and then have like a little little shift of focuses by keyframing the the blur mounts. Uh, you want one to go from just set the keyframes for the blur mounts first, and then I'll uh, I just did. so we want to go from in focus in front to in focus background. So we're gonna. Um, Wait, this is background, so this should be zero when we're done animating that, and this should be free, so that's good. And here it should be zero. So we're in focus, and then we're going out of focus, and the focus is changing. And now you have a different depth of field, which is, looks pretty cool when you know how to use it. And yeah, there you go. Uh, that's the first thing. What I, I normally always do is add a flare. So I go to solid, make a new solid, go to effect, and you can use optical flares. It's not a free plugin, but you can get it. Uh, but there's also some other plugins that do the same. Um, uh, what I think looks good is, I think, motion graphics, and then let's find Sanker 16. That's my favorite one. And I normally put some... Um, a lens texture on it. I'm not sure if that's in the other um, plugins too, but it is for optic flares, and I choose a dirty lens texture, which is, looks pretty cool if you ask me, but that's just my opinion. And I, you want to set it. Um, now you have your flare here, um, but to make it transparent, where it's black, uh, you want to set this to either screen or add. I think screen is more realistic, but I like add more because it's m more flashy 
kind of, and it's more uh, out, uh, like, not, not outstanding, but it's, well, it's a little bit outstanding, but whatever. So, you know, just set it to add or screen, whatever you're going for, if it's for a more realistic look, then go for a screen. And like like I said with the masking, just put one keyframe for the position x y at the end of your clip, and then one at one at the the end, uh, one at the start, and one at the, one at the end. And then you can see this is actually lining up pretty good, good. So we don't have to actually have to do more keyframing. That's good. And you don't you can put them that behind the the um the blur and the depth of field but I normally don't because it makes the texture look a little bit weird the lens texture it is um and they look that action looks pretty good all right and what you want to pay attention to is maybe look at the shadows see where the sun coming from and then put your flare back there it it doesn't really like make a difference when you look at it yourself but when you look at the overall overall um, result it actually does look a lot more better when all the shadows and the light is, match uh, is matching and you wouldn't even like think that it would make d uh, that much of a difference but it does and yeah there you go so we got that and let me think and I guess you want to put go back into your main comp and now you want to put some wiggle on it or maybe like a, a rotation animation um, so you want to first of all you want to scale your clip up uh, so you press S for scale and then go to something like 110 that's what I use normally or 114 most of the time because it works with my wiggle preset um, so we have 110 then press R for rotation and you can keyframe that uh, and you wanna like kind of have the camera tilting and that looks pretty cool most of the time so you wanna go to the end and set that to the opposite number and just make sure your um, your edges don't uh, show up and you can actually hide that a little bit by making a cinematic bars so that's pretty easy go to new solid make that a black solid okay then double click on the rectangle tool now you have a perfect um, mask here then stretch those out just those on the sides then set your mask to subtract and then press double M or this um, arrow down and kind of put the mask expansion back to maybe like and I'm gonna go with ne negative 30 finger looks pretty good without being too too in your face <laughs> I, I use that exp expression quite, uh, quite often even though it doesn't make sense I guess and just putting those cinematic um, bars here I think makes a huge difference somehow uh, and so that that's a start and then add some wiggle I have my wiggle presets here um, like wiggle cinematics I have one just for the position so it's like wiggling really hard and then it slows down and then I have one uh, sorry let me just delete those uh, one wiggle cinematics with rotation and that actually has some rotation wiggle in it too, but you really have to uh, scale your clip up when you're using this one because see how the edge is showing up here, so I'm just gonna scale it up to 114 and there you go, it's a little bit, that looks better um, now how I set those up where it was just um, let, me s let me show you uh, first of all you wanna have a Go to expression control, so effects, expression controls, and a slider control. I'm gonna have two or three of those, depending on if you want to have the rotation in or not. And we're gonna take it in. So, um, 
Let's see. Uh, I have my my time normally at two. So I just set those up like I, I do right here, and um, I'll explain it a little bit. And maybe I'll put that to fifty, I think. And there was like two to three-ish, and then set a, a keyframe for all of those. Go back one keyframe and set them all to zero. Okay. And now go forward a couple of frames and set those back to like 15. Uh, but don't adjust the first one. And this one to zero actually. And now we have those keyframes. Okay. So how we set this up is go to the position you want to, uh, or the value you want to wiggle. This time we're going to go with position and rotation. We just said rotation up, okay. Um, position and rotation. And want to. Alt, click on position first, type in wiggle, uh, and open parentheses and pick whip the first slider control, then comma, pick whip the second one, and parentheses, and this thing here, I don't know what to call it, <laughs> uh, and there you go. And for rotation, we're going to do the same, Alt-click, wiggle, open parentheses, um, pick with the first one, comma, pick with the third one, and end parentheses, and that thingy, even though you don't actually have to do it, because it does it automatically. Okay, so there you go. That's a basic setup. And those are called expressions. I'll go into detail into them in a different tutorial because there's so much to them, but uh, yeah, that's for a different tutorial. Um, and now you're wiggling, basically. Wiggling all over the place, really strong at first, and then it kind of tones down, and that always looks good when you kind of tone down the wiggle. And what those numbers mean is um, that it wiggles by the value of 2 per second it wiggles um, by the value of 2 uh, no it wiggles 2 times per second so 2 times per second by the value of 15 so what's after the comma is the uh, amount and here would be 0 but at the start it would be 3 right here and this one would be 50 so it wiggles 50 um, well the amount of 50 on position and 3 on rotation at the start and it goes back to 15 on position and 0 on rotation and um, that makes a pretty cool effect and yeah guys I think that's it for now so I can so I don't, don't want to make this too long it has been nearly 20 minutes kind of um, I just want to render this out and upload as soon as possible. And yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed and had some learned something. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully, till next Tuesday and goodbye.